come back to the telnet and SSH in Cisco Packet Tracer tutorial. In part 1, we talked about the telnet setting and we learned how to configure the telnet session on our router and telnet from the remote machine to our device. And also I mentioned that the telnet session is not safe because the packet and communication is happening in the clear text environment and if other users can sniff your packets and capture your packets they easily can steal your password for your telnet session. So the solution for this is a SSH connection. Here we'll discuss about how to configure the SSH on our Cisco router in our server room. To do that, uh, this time I directly connect to the router, go to the CLI mode, okay, press enter. And to do that, first of all, you must remember to dream your router name uh, from the default setting on the packet tracer. In the part one, we change our router name to the router one, so we don't need to do the same things again. So I go to the config mode, and this time uh, I use the IP domain to set the domain name for our router. So use this syntax: IP domain name. Okay, okay. If I can type, yes. For example, IP domain and use a question mark or old friend. Okay, we've got to uh, put the default domain name here. IP domain name, for example, sasites.net here. Press enter. Then you should create the encryption key for your SSH session. To do that, you must use this command in global config mode. So, crypto and use a question mark key and uh, Next thing is generate. We want to generate the new key and the type of our key is a RSA encryption and just press enter and you see that our Cisco router asks us about to the size of the key. It's recommended for SSH version 2. We use the bigger size for our key size. I choose a 1024 and press enter. OK. Our key is generated, our key is ready to use for our encrypted session. Then the next step is creating a user. To create a user on Cisco devices, you can use the username command. Username, for example, OK, and you can see here the SSH5 is enabled. Yes, and uh, our router is able to communicate for SSH. By the way, we are going to create a user by the username command. Username, then I use a question mark again, and we should put the word for username, for example, SK. Then we can also set the privilege or access level for a user, but uh, at the moment we don't need. But for your information, for example, we can set the username. Uh, with the privilege number of 15 which is automatically uh, logging the user in a specific level for logging. Now let's do that, why not? Okay, username is gay, privilege 15 is a maximum level for pr privilege and then we can create a password. I set the password similar at my username which is not recommended in the real world. By the way, this is a tutorial in a lab environment and then press enter and our user is created. Then we need to go to the line VTY for telnet like we did in telnet. Line VTY is 0 to 4 and ask this line to log in from the local database of user which is we created. And then the next command is a transfer. The transport command defines which protocol can be used to connect to a line. In the other word, we set that our VTY line to transport, transport, yes, transport, and for our input. And as you can see, which type of connection is accepted? We can set for all for all protocols or none for non-protocols which do not allow any communication from the VTY line 
or we can specify the connection to the SSH or Telnet. Okay, in this example, we are going to specify the transport input for SSH only. And now our job is done on our router side. And okay, let's come back here. We can close this tab and go back to our PC in our IT office. And okay, we add our copy. Then we can easily SSH in a secure way to our router. Let's try the ping first. And I see I still I've got a connection with my router or not. Yes, we I can see the reply from the router. The SSH command. Uh, in your PC, in a Windows environment or other environment, you may use the different client for SSH. By the way, the Cisco Packet Tracer have embedded uh, SSH client and the command line is something like this. SSH-L for login, then come with the username and the target machine. My username is SK and my target machine is 192.168.0.1 and press enter. And you can see our SSH connection is open. I need to enter my password for my user, which was the SKA again. And because we set our user privilege in 15, you can see after the login to the SSH session, the SSH session automatically logged my user in to the privilege mode, and which is uh, I've got a very powerful user here, and even no need to enable the router. And this user is very uh, very dangerous. It's recommended you create the user at lower or default privilege level. When after the SSH, the user should be enable the device and enter the credential for that. I go to the config. Okay, and this time I can set whatever I want here, or even I can see the configuration of my router from my IT office. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, you've learned how to set up the Telnet and SSH in a packet tracer and you learn that SSH is a secure way to connect to your devices on the server room and your remote device. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook pages and leave your comments and messages. This video was a uh, on-demand video requested by one of our users and who wants to learn how to use SSH in Packet Tracer. Thank you for watching and see you in next episode of the Network and Cisco Packet Tracer tutorials.